I'm often asked to give my opinion on your upcoming graphics card purchases, which GPU to buy, how much to spend, which performs better, do I need ray tracing features, etc. Although it's impossible to address every situation, every configuration, every permutation, I felt the best thing that I could do was now that Nvidia's entire Turing lineup is out in the wild, and drivers have had a chance to mature, that I take the entire stack for a spin and compare performance across a number of games and resolutions. So this video will aim to be a comprehensive look at relative performance of all of the green team releases from their latest generation. If you've been searching for that final piece for your show build, look no further than Thermaltake's new water ram, DDR4. The low profile 3200 speed dims look great in any configuration, but the RGB magic really happens when you attach the included custom water block. Compatible with Thermaltake's extensive RGB ecosystem and Amazon Alexa, water ram is a true eye catcher that will make your system stand out from the crowd. So check out the link below to learn more. There's going to be a lot of data presented in this video, so let's just get right to testing methodology and setup. What I aimed to do was take a representative sample of performance across 1080p, 1440p, and 4K with all seven cards in the current NVIDIA stack. As of filming, this includes the following cards, the GTX 1650, the GTX 1660, GTX 1660 Ti, RTX 2060, RTX 2070, RTX 2080, and RTX 2080 Ti. Now, while it would be impossible to test every version of every card, I tried to keep the graphics cards used in this test on a fairly even playing field. I didn't have the exact same AIB model across all seven GPUs. However, I did choose an overclocked card at every step along the way to try to keep the playing field as level as possible. So while you'll see Asus Strix cards, EVGA for the win cards and MSI Gaming Z cards, because they all are running at roughly the same percentage overclock versus their base, and thus will be fair to compare against each other. Yes, this testing isn't 100% perfect, and I know someone somewhere will have complaints, but this will be relevant data for the vast majority of people out there. I ran each card through nine different tests at each resolution, all using my 9900K test bench running at five gigahertz and 16 gigs of Corsair Vengeance LPX 3200. I recorded three individual runs of each test and averaged them to get the results. Here is the raw performance data for all the cards in all the tests at all of the resolutions. Now that's a lot to swallow, and we're gonna have to boil it down to its most important elements right now to try to draw some conclusions. What I did next was try to figure out a way to take that raw data and distill it to show relative performance. But in order to show relative performance, you need to choose a baseline to compare against. 
I chose to use the lowest performing card in the stack as the baseline, the GTX 1650. I took all of the tests that return results in FPS, this is everything except Fire Strike, added up the frame rates and divided by eight, giving me an average FPS for each card at each resolution. I then plotted them against the GTX 1650 to which I assigned a score of 100. Are you a little confused? Well, let me just show you an example. Here's the 1080p result. You can see that the GTX 1650 scores 100 here, meaning that it scores exactly 100% of the baseline, which makes sense as the baseline is itself, the GTX 1650. As we move up the stack, each subsequent card scores higher, showing that the cards score some percent of the GTX 1650 score. This is called relative performance. Here are the relative performance charts for 1440p and 4K as well, showing similar scaling as we move from the low end to the high end. Of course, the 2080 Ti will be a better performer than the 2070, that just is logical, but these charts show you by what percentage this is happening. By being able to move the raw data over to a percentage scale, we can then use these results to talk about anything else that we might also be able to translate to a percentage scale, like say, price. The next chart is probably the most important one that I'm going to show you today, and that's the comparison of relative price versus relative performance. As with the FPS result, I took each MSRP and started at the GTX 1650 baseline, assigning each card a score based on what percentage of the GTX 1650's price it might cost you to purchase one. For instance, the RTX 2080's base MSRP is $699 versus the GTX 1650's $159, meaning it would receive a score of 440, or 440% of the cost of the baseline. Because I now had both cost and performance scored against the same baseline, this allowed me to plot them together on overlapping line graphs, and here's what that looks like. What strikes me most here isn't that as we move up the stack, we seem to be getting less and less cost effective. I think that much was something that we probably could have assumed. It's actually just how consistent the performance line is. Each subsequent entry actually improves by an almost predictable amount. There aren't any huge spikes or exponential increases or decreases. If there was a theoretical RTX 2090 or something, we could probably use this chart to figure out how it would perform, at least relative to the other cards in the stack. Price, on the other hand, does see what looks like an exponential increase. And this leads to the price performance comparison to go south somewhere around the RTX 2060, which is where we see the lines cross. Anywhere below this on the stack, we can actually say that it looks like Nvidia is providing probably a decent performance to price ratio, at least for them. Whereas the 2070 and above seem to be definitively bad return on investment. So that's a data-driven look at the entire Nvidia Turing stack and hopefully, Something in this video may be of use to you somewhere along the way, be it raw data results so that you know what GPU to buy to play Ghost Recon Wildlands at 1440p, be it relative performance of one card to another, or be it the price to performance ratio of your particular graphics card, I know that I'll probably be referencing this data many times moving forward. Thanks for watching guys as always, and I'll see you in the next video.